The Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 1, beginning at verse 14. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And as he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, I always think it's very easy for Jesus. You know, I just think it is. Because if he was ever short of wine or bread or fish at some catering event, he could just make more, couldn't he? And if he didn't want to go the long route home, he could just walk on water, because that would be the shortcut. And if he ever needed more disciples, more people to follow him, more people in his gang, he just said, follow me. And they instantly left their nets and followed him. Have you tried that? Have you tried asking someone, go, come follow me to church? And what's the reaction you get, you know? Like, um, yeah, not today, thanks. No, I'm a bit busy. I'm a bit busy. Or, it's not really my kind of thing. You know, no, not really. Or, do you know, I'm not for the church. All wars have always been about religion, so I don't want anything to do with it. You know, you know what you get, don't you? But we want to be, bring people in. We want people to know the love of God, the love of Jesus. We want people to, to feel free from shame or guilt. We want people to know the joy of walking with Jesus every day in their lives, the difference that it can make, the abundant life. We're like Willy Wonka trying to give away the chocolate factory. We have some amazing thing, but nobody seems to want it. But it's not just us, okay? The church has been bad at this for hundreds of years. Yes, the whole church has been... So take comfort, you know, you're not the only ones. You're not the first. We've been bad at this for ages. So bad that we've had to think up special words and names. So, uh, so for a start, we call it mission. That's a Latin word. That's going to bring people in. Uh, so a Latin word meaning sent, because Jesus sent the disciples. Then we tried evangelism. That's a Greek word meaning good news, you know. Um, and then we tried disciple. That's another Greek word meaning follower or learner. We even had a decade of evangelism, didn't we? Has that helped? Not really. Not really, it hasn't. And, um, and in fact, all those words now just kind of feel a bit scary, don't they? And intimidating and um, guilt-inducing. And, you know, people go, oh, I wouldn't even evangelism. I wouldn't do that to my dog if I had a dog. You know, it's like we don't want to even say those things. So, um, and, and we kind of feel it's wrong to browbeat people into church, don't we? Like, you know, feel bad and then come to church and feel better. It doesn't really go right does it or just knocking on people's doors out of the blue and going is it well with your soul we don't do that because we wouldn't like someone to do it to us would we it's just you know um so um i want to talk about that stuff today but i'm not going to use those words all right so just pretend that's what i'm just telling you that i'm, that I'm talking about it so that you know that's what i'm talking about but i don't want to use those words all right so um and if that hasn't confused you, maybe this will. I've got a little video. Uh, it's about oh, a decade old at least. You know how coffee shops, Starbucks, Costa, are everywhere, and how they're very good at selling what their stuff. It's very good at. Someone said, imagine if the church uh, ran ran a coffee shop. Would it be very good and slick like Starbucks, or would it look a bit different? So, um, and this is no, nothing to do with Forest Edge, by the way. Nothing to do with that. At all. This is a parable, an analogy, um, and, um, and it's meant to, to make us think. So um, let's, let's watch this little film.
sorry. I think I can't do it with the sound for people at home. Doo -doo -doo. Um, let's try it like this. Sorry, people at home. We're going to have to see if this, how this works. Oh no, stop. You're, you're getting all the best bits. It didn't happen like this when I, uh, when I practiced this at home. Okay. Right. Steve says you should get sound from the HDMI. Maybe. <laughs> Give us sound. Uh, but not if it's going the other way. That's the trouble. Okay. Don't worry. Let's see if this works now. So are you nervous? Because I, mean, I haven't been to a coffee shop since I was a little girl. At least you've been to a coffee shop. I've never been to one. Do you see their bumper stickers? Check them out. No? Oh yeah, there we go. They have to park so far away. Okay. Check that out. Now, people, people, don't just drink your coffee today. Let it fill you. Let it inspire you. Try an Americana, a mocha latte, even a cappuccino with its rich and satisfying body. Now, I want to remind everyone, don't forget our goal of converting 500 people to coffee. Remember, bring your non-coffee drinking friends with you. Drag them here if you have to. Buy them a scone even. Just get them here. Because remember, Coffee is good. All the time. All the time. We feel we're the coffee best kept good. secret in coffee shops. Last year alone, we had 75 new coffee drinkers, 75 new customers. We're not like those guys down the street that water their product down. We serve nothing but 100% pure coffee. Coffee is so important in everyday life, it's more important than air. Hey, how are you doing? What can I have for you today? Uh, I think I just want some coffee. You've never been here before, have you? No. Um, excuse me. If this is your first time visiting with us, would you go ahead and raise your hands? We would love to welcome you. Raise your nice and high. Javaluya. We would love to get some information about you so we can follow up with you. If you could go ahead and fill those out, we'll be able to get things started. Oh, and when you bring those back to us, we'll have a special gift just for you. We just wanted some coffee. Uh, you can just go ahead and sit right over there to fill those out. That'd be great. Thank you. What could they possibly want all this information? You know, some people go skydiving. I serve people coffee. It's a rush. I love it. I put my heart and soul into that coffee. And there's nothing like seeing somebody take a sip of coffee for the first time in their life. We get a lot of visitors coming through. Not always do they come back, but deep down inside, I know a bean's been planted. Some people just can't take the real stuff. Thank you, Barista Mark. It's so good to see everyone at the International Anointed First Starbucks of the Northern Valley. And I want to draw our attention to the tip jar. This is real important. I want to share with you something that happened to me when I was just a new coffee drinker right out of college. I learned that I could combine 
giving to my barista with my coffee. And this is the result. I found out that when I gave, my coffee came back to me, pressed down, shaken together, and running out all over. And I was a changed man. It's because the word joy, J-O-Y, means Java, others, and you. And when you include the you know, others... I've been thinking about National Coffee Day. National Coffee Day is coming up, you know. And it's always a big day for us, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to send out a direct mailer, and I'm sure our attendance is going to more than double, and it's going to change everything. And then in two weeks, we're going to be serving coffee Great. to the Thank homeless, you. and you're not going to want to miss that. Care. What can I get you today? I think I just want some coffee. Okay. That'll be $3.98. Hi. Oh, hey, what did you want to drink? Nothing. Um, I couldn't find the restroom anywhere. Let's, let's just get out of here. And there you are, sir. Thank you. Oh, I almost forgot. Your special gift for being a first-time visitor. Thank you. May your day be filled with coffee. So, so we'll see you next week, right? Yeah. All right. Uh. Well, uh, now you know what not to do. <laughs> and uh, for those of you on Zoom, I'll send it out, uh, I'll send it out later uh, so you can get a link. So um, let me draw you a picture of, of our parish, a model of our parish, okay? There's the church, that's you and me, that's people who we know who come to church, you know, that's the electoral role, the people who give regularly, the people who come regularly, when I say regularly, I don't mean once a year regularly. I mean, like, you know, pretty regular. So that's us and maybe 100, 150 of us, okay, uh, there. And then, um, and then there's people who do come once a year. They'll come to every Christmas service we do. They also come to, like, coffee mornings we do. Or they come to help with the churchyard clear-up. You know, they come, and they come to little gyms. They come to Forest Edge. These are people who are happy to come to church stuff. And they know it's St. James, and they know it's church stuff but they're not part of the church, okay? Um, and so uh, that's maybe 300 people, I guess. And then, and then there's everybody else, okay? The rest of the community. These are people who, uh, who've never been to church, who don't have a neighbor who goes to church, don't have a friend who goes to church. They have never heard of St. James. They live in Old Holt and they've never heard of St. James. It's true. That's about two and a half thousand people. Okay, two and a half thousand people. So for every one person we know, there's about five that we don't. Okay, and I'm telling you this because if St. James is going to grow, and we want it to grow, it's going to grow from the fringe, from those people who already know us, who want to know us a bit more, you know. And, um, and the chances of people coming from outside, from the outer ring to membership is very small. It does happen, but it's quite rare. So what we do in the fringe, in that middle circle, is really important. Activities like uh, Forest Edge, the vestry group, we create knit and matter, little gyms, the summer fete, Christmas bazaar. I could add uh, the magazine. This list is not exclusive. Um, also, uh, not forgetting things like baptism or weddings or funerals or flower arranging or churchyard helpers. And what you need to see, what we need to understand is that each one of those things is like a bridge, okay, for people to cross and to join St. James. Now, uh, but what about, let's talk about what, how people join or what happens and, and things. Because when I, was, uh, when I was young in the punk era, remember that, Sue? Yeah. We remember that, don't we? Yeah. And uh, people would say about punks, Oh, I don't want them in church with their funny hair and things. Oh, we don't like them. They're no good for church. And, uh, and, and if you go back a bit further, if you watch Grantchester, or you remember the 1950s, you know, if people behaved in a, in a non-good way, if they got drunk or if they had a baby out of wedlock, people would say, oh, the shame of it. I don't know how they dare show their face around here. How they dare come into church when they <clears> behave <throat> like that. And it seemed as if church was really about how you behaved you know if you behave right you belong in church you can be part of church 
But then things moved on and you can blame Martin Luther in the 16th century, or you can blame Billy Graham uh, last century. But it became about what we believe, what we thought in our heads or in our hearts, wherever you do your thinking. Um, and um, so it became about believing the right thing. You know, three steps to heaven. Uh, here's a leaflet about the sinner's prayer. We had to convince people about theology. If you make the right choice, choose for Jesus, you'll be saved, you know? And all of, and all of that is true, but it doesn't half make getting people into church difficult, doesn't it? If you've got to try and convince people of a proposition that you're not entirely sure of yourself, and you may not even be sure of those kind of words, then, you know, it's difficult. And what if they ask the question? What if they say, so how about the virgin birth then? Or tell me how Jesus is God and man. Or what about the Trinity or suffering? Or it's like, oh no, it's so hard, isn't it? But sometimes we, we look at if church is about, if you believe the right things, then you can be part of church. Obviously, I've set this up because I'm going to tell you a third way, aren't I? So there is a third way. The church is not just a group of people who believe in Jesus and the creeds, although we do. The church is not just a group of people who try to be loving and kind and forgiving and follow the ways of Jesus, although we do. The church is a group of people. We're a community. We are invited by God and chosen to be here with one another. We're a gathering. That's what it is. And I just can't really um, kind of tell you deeply enough how theological it is. God is not one God is a trinity. God is a community. God set man and woman in families because they're many communities. God set those families in tribes and nations. The whole thing about belonging to a group of people is fundamental to our desire and human need. And, um, and Jesus came and he gathered men and women as disciples to be a community around him. And after he died and risen, he, he, set up, he said, you are the body of Christ. This idea about being a community is very strong to who we are. I, I heard someone say something about our church, uh, it's, it, become, it can become just a community. And I was thinking, just a community? That's amazing to be a community. That's a big gospel God thing. It's not just a community. The church being a community is, is huge. So when we try to get people to grow, when we start to think about growing the church, when we think about people walking across the bridges, we don't have to um, think about whether they're getting their behavior right or wrong. Because do you know what? None of us are perfect. None of us are getting our behavior right. And we don't have to think about if they're believing the right thing. Because not many of us have a degree in theology. But I do. But not many of us have a degree in theology. And I know I probably don't believe the right thing either. All we have to do is try and get people to join our community, join the group. The group. And you think, oh, Simon, but that's, it should be harder than that. Simon, it's got the Greek and Latin words. Don't make it this easy. You know, and it's not my job. Surely it's someone else's. It's the vicar's or whatever. But let me tell you how this works. Someone comes to Forest Edge, okay, and they come to the cafe and they, they get to know Rose, you know, and, and other people. And then Rose says, oh, it's coming up to Christmas. Would you like to come for one of our services? And they come to church, they come up here, and they kind of, it feels comforting and familiar. And the hymns that they sing are like, oh, remind them of childhood. And they go, oh, I remember this. And they, and they see the people in church. They go, oh, it's Catherine. I know Catherine. And I know, uh, you know, this person. And I know this person from the coffee shop. And then they keep on going to, the, to Forest Edge. And then uh, gets to Easter and, and uh, Rose says, well, why don't you come along to Mothering Sunday, you know, fourth Sunday of Lent. Oh, come along to Mothering Sunday and they come. And then after a while, they come more often. And then as they come, they like, they realise they know more people and they start having questions and maybe they have answers to prayer or they just have questions about faith and then they go, oh, I see Simon's running a group about, about prayer. Oh, I think I'll join that. And so they become part of church. Like that, and, and as to whether they behave right in the end, I'd leave that up to God. You know, I'd leave that up to God. I think people belong to the church, then they start to explore their beliefs, and as their beliefs change, then their behavior changes. But if we start from the other end, we'll never get anywhere. So, this is our plan to try and help to make it easier for people to come to church. That we have all these 
bridges into the community uh, and networks of friendships and relationships. And, and through belonging to these, people can move from the fringe to the centre. So I think this church has lots and lots of bridges, you know. Some churches have none. Um, and believe me, there are quite a lot of churches that don't have any bridges at all. And, um, and they have to make them up. And they have to, their first step is to think, what can we do to reach into the fringe, to go outside the church walls? But we have loads of bridges. Um, if we had more people, I'm sure we could look at the bridges and go, well, we're not reaching that group or we're not reaching that group. But we've got plenty to be going on with. And I think if you were to add it up, all these, all these things, we might reach 500 people or more a year quite easily, which is a fifth of people in order, six of people in order, which is a lot, you know. So we have the bridges, but what we need is ways to, uh, to enable people to get across those bridges to come into faith. So I want to call these staircases, all right? And uh, so it's about bridges and staircases. And um, to help people, a little easy steps. That's what a staircase is. I could never get that high, but if you build me a set of stairs, I could, you know? They're amazing, aren't they? So you just have to <coughs> enable and support people from the edges. So let me give you an example of a staircase. So there's a baptism. There's one happening this afternoon, actually, a little baby prayer. And, um, and so far, uh, she and her family have met the vicar and the sponsor. And, um, and that's lovely. And they're going to have a fantastic service. They're going to really love it. They are. Um, and uh, they're going to they're gonna do. And then what's going to happen is Zoe's going to go around. Our children and families worker is going to go around and meet them and, and invite them to little gyms. And say, why don't you come along on a Friday it's at school? And when they're there, of course, they're going to meet other parents. And they're going to know and be part of a little mini community. Be lovely. They'll belong. And then from the other parents and from Zoe, they're going to hear about messy church. And then they're going to come along on a third Sunday down to the village hall, and they're going to meet all of you, the whole wider church family. Uh, that's why it's so important. And, um, and they're going to meet other families, and they're going to sing, they're going to hear about the faith. They might hear the Bible for the first time for years and years and years. That might be the first time they've heard some bits of the Bible for so long. And, uh, and they're even singing, you know, and, um, and then some of their friends and other people go, do you know, we go with, we go with Zoe on a third, on a first or second Sunday, whatever it is, third, uh, to, to, to Sunday club. Why don't we come along to Sunday club, mum and dad? So they come to Sunday club and their mum and dad come to church. They come and sit in here and, uh, and they get to know other people here <coughs> and they get to experience, they get to catch the faith, you know, when they see us how we love one another. They get to catch the faith when they see how we support charities. They get to catch the faith when they experience how we are moved in worship with this God that we connect to. They see this stuff and they experience faith for themselves. And they may even get on the coffee rotor. That would be an added bonus. Um, and then, you know, maybe they've got some questions. Maybe they've got some, some other things. But they're coming along regularly and maybe they start, maybe they join the vicar's group that's doing whatever it's doing, you know, about prayer. But they're deepening their faith. And in fact, that's all of us, isn't it? We're all at this stage where we're coming along regularly. We know people, but we're having questions and thinking about how I can live my faith out, how I can know more. And so some people join house groups where they can have those questions answered and they can talk and support one another. And then they go from the house group and they go on to be to be uh, ordinate, ordained or something, you know, as a vicar, and then they go on to be a bishop. Because they all started somewhere. Bishop Karen last night said, I remember when I was 30 and I went to my confirmation. And I didn't think then that I'd be wearing all this garb now. And nor did I at my confirmation. And none of us know where this staircase will lead. But if we keep taking little steps, we might get there. So that's, that's our plan that's our strategy that's how it hangs together isn't that so much easier than trying to argue with somebody on a doorstep isn't that so much easier than than hiring a big name evangelist and then trying to sell tickets and hope people come along to hear them you know this is all we have to do we have the bridges the outposts of the kingdom 
We, uh, we just need the staircases. And at PCC, we're going to keep discussing all the different areas that we have and how we can put in the right steps. And of course, people can go, there'll be more than one staircase. There'll be more than one way that people come to get to know God. But we're trying to make it easy, trying to help people that if they want to, they can know God deeper and know God more.